Hey, hi Isabella, how are you this morning? Well, actually, it's not morning, it's evening where you're at. Hopefully you had a good Christmas, I know you had to fly. But hopefully everything is going okay. Alright. Uh, let me get, let me load up uh, Navigraph. Where is my Navigraph? Right there. <coughs> Excuse me. And we'll load in our flight plan here. New flight from file. Bada bing. There we are. Uh, going out of Oakland. Dang, two days rest and then right back on it again, huh? And and then I think you said you work until like the second. And then you're off for a while after that. Something that, I think this you said this was a long rotation. Okay, gotcha. All right, I think we're ready to go here from the gate. Let's go ahead and get on. Our anti-collision lights are on. Let's go into our overhead panel. Just go down with the flow here. Da -da -da -da. Looks good. Come down here. Those are off. Looks good. Three six zero. Oops, too much. Whoa, whoa, easy. Uh, Seattle. Oh, Seattle, Seattle. Elevation. Yeah, who cares? Four thirty-two. We'll say four fifty. Why does the sound keep on disappearing? Okay, it shouldn't disappear. Let's see, sound, sound, where are you? Okay, that's on check mark. That's that's not supposed to be check mark. So that's fine. It's weird. All right, continue through the flows here. Pedo heat we won't do yet. Let's just come on. Pumps. Alright, looks all good. Let's go ahead and let them know we're ready for pushback if this even works. I don't know if this is going to work. Oh, there's a tug right there. Let's see. Go get rid of the chocks. Hello, Cap. We are ready for pushback. Chocks are removed. FMC, this one should be on climb. Not data out of date. Oh, I got old data in there. Thought I updated it. Doggone it. I'll have to wait till I land and update it. Trim should set 5.6. Marker check completed. Bypass been inserted. Release parking brakes. Parking brakes are released, clear to push. Let's go nose to the right, tail to the left. Packs are coming off. Okay, 
There's a spin up. Fuel's coming on. light up start number one coming on Alright, we got two good engines. Go ahead and put it over on the generators now. Backs come back on. Listen to auto. We'll do the probes as we taxi. Wait for them to disconnect. Alright, tow truck is out of the way. Push back tug. Ride is clear. Ride is clear. All right, here we go. Go ahead and put on our taxi light. Engine this ignition switches to continuous. Uh, APU can come off. We'll go ahead and put a pedo static on. We'll give him time to warm up. Flap set to one for takeoff. Brakes released. Let's do this. Make sure I'm on 122.8. Oakland traffic, Southwest 1103, taxi runway 30 in Oakland. Any traffic in the area, please advise. Alright, we've got everything set and ready for takeoff. Everything is set. Altitude 10,000 feet, pretty much runway heading after takeoff. Don't see anything but those signs that I need to remove that are on the taxiway. The turning ready, the turning on this is still kind of jacked up to me, it feels like. It's not as smooth. It's still kind of jerky. I don't know if anybody else is getting that, but it seems a little bit jerky.
It's like I don't know how they messed that up. Alright, we're coming to the end of the run. We're going to go ahead and turn on our lights. Let's go to strobe. Oakland traffic, southwest 1103 is going to be taking runway 30, departure to the north. Any traffic in the air, please advise. You see how it turns? It's just weird. Nobody's called in the area. See this tax taxiway sign in, in here on the taxiway? We need to get rid of those. It's an Orbex thing. And so are the double yellows there you just saw. Oakland traffic, Southwest 1103, departure runway 30, straight out departure to the north. You can see all that. It has to do with Orbix. This will be a rolling departure. We'll go ahead and set it up here. Toga. Airspeed's coming alive. Eighty knots throttle hold. V one rotate. Positive rate. Gears coming up. Uh, what, what's that, Isabella? To have, what, what do I need selected in FSU IPC? Okay, gear is up. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. We're waiting for the flaps up. I didn't start my clock, damn it. Can I go direct here? Dead hit looks like a good place to go direct. Go ahead and start that turn. Oh, the rudder pedals. <laughs> she caught me again. I'm surprised it doesn't do when I hit mode C on V Pilot. It must not be connected. Because last time in the NGX, I think if you hit mode C on VATSIM, it automatically put your TCAS on. I don't remember though. I might be wrong. Back a little bit here. Straighten up. Fly right. Climbing a little too fast there. like a rocket. I'm going to get rid of the HUD. I don't need the HUD anymore. Okay, coming out of the soup. Come over to the left a little bit. What the hell is going on? It's 
Right to the left. <laughs> Just a little to the left. There we go. Zero, zero, 005. Bring it back. Perfect. Hold it right there. Just a little nose up. And our climb. Going through 10,000 feet. Let's go up to 36. Oops, I hit the wrong one there. Okay, autopilot's coming on. On that VNAV. Ten thousand feet. Engine ignition switches can come off. Taxiway signs can come off. People can get up and move around the cabin as they like. There's ten thousand feet. Okay, the rudder pedals. Okay, I'll check those. So, do you cal did you calibrate the your pedals in FSU IPC? Okay, all right. I'll take a look at that when I land. Because I used to do, if I remember right, in FSU IPC, I used to do the brake sensitivity too in there. So I'll do it. I'll set it up for the rudders. Then an FSU IPC. It'll fix it. Okay, good. All right, three six zeros dialed in there. So I'm going to be climbing at a speed of three hundred knots. Let's see what kind of fuel we, we're supposed to have. 1303 over deadhead. What does our flight plan say? Well, Red Bluff is supposed to be 11.4. It doesn't have all the SID departures on here, so... The SID waypoints. It does down here, but not in the body of the flight plan. So we're looking for... Red Bluff should have 11.4 on the fuel. And should be arriving into Seattle with 6.5. For about 400 pounds more. So we'll see what happens here. coming up on deadhead right now. We're going to go ahead and go weather on this side. And it should be set up. I'm going to go ahead and set standard. We're coming up to 18,000. The panel here is 2,200. That's fine. That's all good. That is all good 
there. Seatbelt sign should be the auto out of 10. All the other switches look good. Back to the outside view. That looks pretty dope. Looks really good. Let's see if we're gonna run into any ATC today? Probably not. Nope. A lot of planes flying though. A lot of planes flying. Let's sync up the heading here at 343. 360, E-Nav, L-Nav, okay, everything looks good. go back. Still learning how to use this damn thing. And performance. Landing performance. What's the weather going to be when we land in? Seattle. Winds are calm now. And for now, it looks like it's going to stay dry. We'll wait till we get a little bit closer to do that. What I'm trying to figure out how to do, and maybe you can tell me how to do this. TMC King, how you doing? Welcome to the stream. I am trying to look at the other charts, not just the airport chart. So if I want to look at the other charts, terminal charts, how do I get to them from here? I don't want to see that. Okay, there we go. It still has to do with... Let's look at all the charts. There we go. So that's Oakland. Okay, now what about Seattle? Terminal charts. Heck, how did I get there? The airport search, so should have read from the FMS. Let's go, we'll do it that way. We're on the Hawk 7 arrival. There we go there. So we'll leave this one up. Oh, what's wrong with your PC?
the PC break. Oh, okay, so it's in transit. Gotcha. Well, hopefully they'll be there soon for you. That's a cool looking pick right there. It actually looks really good. That's a little close. All right, back in the cockpit here. Look at those clouds. They look good. Clouds are looking good. I will be right back. All right, back in the seat again. Holy crap, TMC King. You won all out. You're getting that sim all set up. Did you take the uh, yoke out yet to take a look at it? And how does it feel? How does it feel in your hands?
Yeah, I need to get a knee yoke when I can afford it. I got the CH yoke and this thing is super old. And you can tell it's starting to do the wear and tear, but gotta be able to afford it first. Yeah, it's only it's not bad. I gotta wait a while though, since Christmas was here. That'll make you go broke. You got the MFG crosswind rattle pedals. Wow, you are, you are totally ready to go. That's awesome. Let's go back into here really quick and set up. One seven center is ninety four twenty six. Elevation goes four thirty two. I gotta hit that, that would help. Alright, so we got the information in enter for Seattle. We're level 360. Yeah, TMC King, you are, uh, you are set and ready to go, man. Takes the arm out. <laughs> oh, before wait, 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 wait. Let's go back. Oh, you mean taking that out of there before putting the elevation in there? And then I can go back to that mode, right? Okay, gotcha. Thank you. That's why I love having you here. And TMC King, would you say my first flight will either be Houston to Newark or New or uh, Houston to E uh, London? Nice. That'll be a nice long haul flight. Yeah, it's good to have a uh, lady flyer in here. She's a world world a uh, Airbus pilot. So she knows what's up. Let's see, I should be cruising at point seven eight five. Close enough, seven nine's good. I'm not gonna whine about that. The one thing I do like to have on here, if I go to PMGG setup simu Simulation, I like to see the throttles where they're at. Yes, that's where I'd like to see that. Oh, you're flying for United Virtual, gotcha. Eleven point three, we're a hundred pounds short. Yeah, the last flight we did together was, um, what was it, Newark to Hong Kong. <coughs> that was a long flight.
Yeah, that was a uh, that was a pretty long flight. It's not easy to do long hauls. Yes. LAX to Sydney is a long one. It's not. Uh, yeah, that's that's a long flight. To do a long haul, you gotta have like nothing to do the whole day, and be able to be around at your desk to check everything or check messages or whatnot. It's not easy. Heck, it's not even easy for me to sim anymore since I work Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Used to be pretty easy. Not anymore. So I try to sim when I can sim. Hey, what's up, Black Diamond? Welcome, my friend. I'm doing good, man. Just doing a semi-short flight here from Oakland up to uh, Seattle for the game tonight. So I thought I'd do a flight up that way. How are you doing this? Well, in your part of the uh, state there, it's afternoon. How are you doing this afternoon? Yeah, TMC, I, I agree. The uh, long-haul flights are for the weekend for sure. <laughs> if you were any better, you'd be twins. I like that, Black Diamond. That's awesome. That's one way of looking at it, right? Man, it's just, it's it's sad to be all alone up here at flight level 360. And there is nobody around. I'm going to bring up Vats by my other computer here to see if there's any. I'm almost out of Oakland's airspace, and there is nobody around me for a while. Nobody. Yeah, it, it'll be uh, 
it'll be interesting to see what this project fly I think it I think they overestimated everything it was going to take longer than what they thought but it'd be interesting to see and yep you're always going to be positive Black Diamond I like that you got to be positive man Let's see, what airport do I like to fly in and out of the most? Well, I like to fly in and out of my home airport, which is uh, Sacramento, SMF. But I really enjoy uh, SFO. Uh, I like Vegas a lot. I don't know, there's, there's quite a few out there that I love flying in. I'd say my number one is, of course, my home airport, and then number two would be San Francisco. I think those are the two two airports I fly out of the most Yeah, Montreal is really nice, except for in the winter time. In the winter time, it's just white and dead. I've actually been to Montreal. I had to go there, well, it's been a long time ago, but I had to help go train a customer of ours. And I remember it was in winter time, and it was cold, just cold, cold, cold. Uh, but Montreal is, is a good airport. London is another good airport. I like Frankfurt. Frankfurt's a good one. I don't know, there's a lot of there's a lot of fun airports out there. And let's see, Isabella said hers is Calavi, is that how you the way you say it? Yeah, yeah, I think they're talking about the sim, but doesn't I think that's made Isn't that made for FS? I mean uh, P three D? Isn't Calavi actually an airport that's in here? Somebody made? I might be wrong. Sounds familiar. Could be wrong now. Yeah, I flo I've flown in and out of Stockholm. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's another good one. TM, TMC King, thanks so much for the follow. Greatly appreciate it. Calorie and are my favorites in real life. Yeah, you probably know those airports like the back of your hand. Now that you've been in and out of there so much.
Well, Toulouse is cool because, you know, of course, Airbus is there. So, I mean, there's a crap load of airplanes to look at going in and out of there. I mean, it seems like a pretty simple airport, not much to it. Yeah, I agree. Seattle's really simple. I mean, you got three run, you know, three main runways. You've got to watch out for, uh, of course, bling filled traffic going in and out. And that's kind of cool because you almost, well, actually, you go over the top of the arrival route, the approach for bling filled to arrive into Seattle. So that, that that's a fun airport. And let's see. Yeah, there's not much to lose. Oh, they're making an extension, though. An extension to one of the runways? Yeah, and Drew Whiskey's, uh, I have, that's what we're flying into. We're, well, we're flying into his scenery, so the Seattle Airport, the Boeing Field, he's got Renton and Payne Field. Th those are fun as well to fly into, Black Diamond. Yep, I agree. And see, Houston has a section of taxi that was... Yeah, Houston is a huge airport, just like Dallas Fort Worth is. And if you don't know the airport that well, or the layouts, the taxiways, that can be a, uh, a hard airport. Isabella, let's see, is that an inbox and the airport's out? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Dulles, Dulles, yeah. IAH, Houston Intercontinental. It's easy to get those mixed up, though. Yeah, they're just, both airports are just huge airports. And if you don't pay attention, you, you will and can get lost. Yeah, it's just, if you don't have the taxi charts in front of you or whatnot and pay attention, it's just, they're just massive airports.
Alright, uh, guys and gals, looks like Top of Descent 200 miles. Still no ATC. Oh well, who needs them? Yeah, I know, right? It's so great to have Navigraph now. I have it on my iPad. I have it on the computer. I don't use it on the computer as much as I do on the iPad when I'm flying because it's kind of hard to go back and forth to it. But I use it just to kind of like, you know, show people where we're at, where we're heading, whatnot, like, kind of give you an idea of where we at are in the flight. So I pretty much do it that way on here, but I really use it more on my iPad. But I like to bring it up here so people are watching this. I wonder where we're at. So, you know, obviously we're coming up on Medford Airport. Actually, Medford is is right over over here. This is Rove, uh, Klamath Falls. So we're actually to the east of Medford, making our way up north. And I like to throw in the world map here, and you can kind of take a look at where we're at here. And there's Medford to the west. Klamath Falls to our south, what we just went over. We've got Crater Lake coming up. Won't really be able to see that due to the cloud cover. Let's see. Waste of time connecting. Yeah, that's true. Nobody's been on lately. Everybody, everybody used to control when the voice codec came out, and now like everybody's disappeared. Yeah, uh, TMC King. I, d I have a dual monitor set up too. I use the main one obviously for you know the flight deck and whatnot, and then the other one has like V Pilot on it, and then Streamlabs OBS on it, and then a couple other things that I have on it. <laughs> You're welcome, Black Diamond. Anytime. Uh, it, Black Diamond is just saying he likes how I uh, I give the tours when I'm flying, you know, kind of point out where we're, where we're at in the route, what we're getting close to. So, you know, I like to I like to let people know what's up. I mean, being up here in the air, not, you know, not everybody can tell where we're at by looking at the waypoints. So I like to give a little uh, geography, as I can say. Oh yeah, yeah. You could put you could put it on anywhere. Like I said, I love having it on my iPad because I'm watching the same thing that you see when I bring up here on Navigraph. I'm seeing the same thing on my iPad, except for um, this one I have as my world map, and then on my iPad I've got it, the high altitude chart. So, but like I said, on here I like to show you guys where I'm at, and then on my iPad I use it for everything else, the SIDs and whatnot.
Uh, TMC King, yes, I do have the Quality Wing 787. I haven't. I thought I'd be a huge fan when it came out, but I just haven't been that interested in flying it that much. I guess I'm just a Boeing, a Boeing fan, uh, 737 fan. Just haven't done the uh, 787 much. It is a very cool airplane, though. They did a really good job on it. Yeah, I know my geography. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty good at it. Geography and aviation, believe it or not, they go together. They do. They really do go together. Ah, oh, no, I don't take any, any offense of anything. You can't piss me off. It'd get really hard to make me upset or be offended by something. I, I'm, I got a pretty tough shell. Nah, I don't. I don't get offended. Holy crap, everybody stand back. Seattle Approach is online. Holy crap. We might have somebody to talk to on our way in. 25-6. Let's dial them in. Watch. By the time I get there, you'll freaking take off. Well, I'm closing up shop now. Ah, uh, you're bit. You're the. You're into the uh, 787. Then that's cool. No low flyer 737. Yeah. Yeah. To each his own. You know, some people like flying the 73. Some people like flying the triple seven. It's a little loud. Let's see. I want to turn down the output volume, I guess. Let's turn that a little down a little bit. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm surprised that nobody's on center. They're usually always on. Seattle's one of the ones that are usually always on. Okay, that didn't work. It's too loud in my ear. But it's low here. So that's weird. Output volume. Bring it down some more. And then my mic volume, I think, should be around. I remember last pe last time people were complaining that it was too much. One, two. I want to get to the green, right? Right there. There we go. That's a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, the, it is. The 787 cockpit is, is a lot cleaner. It's a lot simpler. See, that's why I hope one of these days that we can get the Max flying again, and I'm pretty sure PMDG is making the Max and get that thing flying again and get it out because that that's another beauty plane right there is the max you know everybody's like I'm never gonna fly a max rah, 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 rah. you know what I will fly a max even when the when the max comes out I will fly a max A lot of that's due to the media. But I have no fear in flying the Max. Seems like I
think I turned that down too much now. Yeah, I do, Isabella. Doggone it, right? I like to fly my kite as high as I want, as fast as I want. I can hear somebody doing that, being an idiot and doing that. But rumor has it, and this is only a rumor, that it, it has to do, yes, with the MCAS, but there's some other things that's also involved in there. I guess it's not just the MCAS, there's some other stuff that's involved that they need to fix. So I, I believe Boeing's going to do it. They're going to get it fixed. They're going to get it right. And the plane will get back up in the air. When? I don't know. But I hope they get it back up in the air. We got an ATIS now. Gonna go give that 787 a try? Do it. Just do it. Let's see what the ATIS is saying here. 18-1, or what is it? 18... 1800. Say Delta. Delta. Okay. Okay, we're 91 miles from top of descent. Have a snack real quick. The 737 needs a hundred new hundred. Oh, what, I, what I think they need to do is they need to redo the MCAS because you're going to have to have the MCAS because those engines are so big in the front, and that's basically what that MCAS does to keep that thing balanced because the engines are so far forward and they're so large. I think once they can get the software done. I get a couple other fixes, I think the airplane will be fine. That's just my opinion. I think it'll be fine. But they need to really figure out that software and how to make it work right. Four miles, Douglas, turn left, heading one nine or 
and train all the pilots. Every single pilot needs to be trained on how to operate the, NES, the, ne the new 737 and how the MCAS actually works and how to disable it. All right, I'm back. Yeah, they could add ballast weight to move the CG back to where it was originally. Yeah. Runway 16 left, please. You're drifting off to the right. Yeah. They just need to somehow redo that software and get it fixed. That's a lot of money sitting out there on those ramps and all those other locations just sitting there wasting away. So they just they just need to get the problem fixed. And I believe they will. It's just a matter of time. Alright. We're going to be descending via the Hawks arrival. Let's see what our lowest altitude altitude is. Looks to be 6,000. We'll dial that in. Six thousand on the arrival. What did I buy last night? I bought um oh um SXAD design release San Antonio Airport. It's pretty they did a pretty good job, it looks really nice. So I bought that yesterday. A little Christmas gift to myself. Nice little scenery. Especially, you know, Southwest goes to there, so that's cool. This adds one of my other destinations. Alright, let's see where we're at here on the map, because I know Black Diamond likes to know where we're at. If, you, if I don't start showing it, he starts yelling at me. So let's get it up here. 
So we're just east of Salem, Oregon, and we're coming up on Portland in Vancouver. Not Vancouver, Canada, but Vancouver, Oregon. And that's pretty much the split between Washington and Oregon. So we be making our way. We're almost there, and we're almost getting ready to stop our start our top of descent here coming up. Well, the controller's getting out of hand here, man. Easy, bro. Yeah, it does seem like a long descent, huh? But we're coming up to it here. We pretty, we, this battleground is actually Portland. So we start it right over Portland. And that gives you, you know, that gives you enough time, I guess. Because really, from Portland to Seattle, you're not that far away. Let's see, we're at Southwest 1103. Let's see where the real Southwest is at here. Uh, he actually, he's, he's a little bit farther south than me. But he stayed at the same altitude as me, so that's good. And let's see what gate we're going to. We're going to B12. B12. So we can go here, we'll go to taxi, parking gates. B12 is on the end of concourse B, obviously, duh. So depending on what runway they give us to land on, be nice to make Papa. How far down? Pa where's Papa? Actually, it's almost down at the end. So either way, a good long landing would work. This is this looks like this is the B complex right here. So we'll find out what runway we're going to get here when we get closer.
Hey, what's up, Ted? What's going on, brother? I'm getting ready to start my Tampa Decent. I don't have Discord on this computer yet because I'm still installing stuff after my fifth attempt of installing P3D due to Orvix issues. So I haven't installed Discord on this computer yet. I have it on my other one, but then I'd have to wear two headsets to be a pain in the ass, and then I gotta talk to the approach controller. So it'd be too much. There's Tampa Descent. We're out of 36, going down to 6,000, which is the lowest on the arrival. Echo. Three zero zero one. Okay. Oh, okay, you're doing the United States Island Hopper, gotcha. Yeah, one five four, that goes from uh Honolulu to Marjoro. So you're on the you're over in the the uh East Pacific there. Yeah, Honolulu, Guam, yep. Be the Marsh Islands, yep. There's a cool video on that that Sam Chewy did on uh, YouTube. Yeah, that was actually a really good video. That's why you're doing it, yeah. That's cool. I used to, believe it or not, I used to, me and a buddy of mine, we started out Southwest Virtual back in the day. Uh, and we got it really big and it got too big for us so we gave it to somebody else and they took it over I just I don't like flying virtual airlines cause I like to do my own thing and fly when I want and when I want what routes I want I just not into the uh, virtual flying thing the airline thing because then I could just pick whatever airplane and just go even though I, I fly you know I fly the real routes and everything the real flight numbers I just not uh, I'm just not big into the uh, VA world. But yeah, we started up Southwest Virtual back in the day, long time ago. Hold on, real quick. My puppy's bugging my dog here. Hold on. And another thing is I just don't have all that time anymore since I work Monday through Fridays and then, you know, weekends are busy with family and whatnot. It's just, it's just too hectic. And then I can just fly whenever I'm ready. One or two flights a month, yeah. That seems pretty good. But I, I still, you know, I can't commit to that. So, like, this is only my second flight in... 
Did I do anything last month? I don't think I did anything this whole month. Oh, congrats, man. Yeah, you've been doing a lot of flying, private, you know, private flying lately. That's awesome. Going to get your IFR rating. That's awesome. Oh, I love the NGXU. I love it. It's it's a great it's a great aircraft. I really do like it a lot. I think they've done a really good job on it. Once I can find out what room we were going to get, I can, I can do all this stuff here, so... Wait to find out what runway we get. Oh, heck yeah, I'm ready for that. I'm ready for the expansion pack. Oh yeah, I can't wait for uh, FS 2020 to come out. That's going to be awesome. That is going to be awesome. A little bit of weather here, painting a little bit of weather on the radar here. C3001 is the altimeter. I'm going to put it over here into the standby mode. 3001. Alright, that's in the standby mode. Once we get past 18,000 feet, we'll hit the standard button. There we are. We'll give approach a call now. It's standard. Boom. Seattle approach. It's the Southwest 1103 with you descending via the Hawks arrival. We're out of 17-4 now with Echo. Southwest 1103, Seattle approach, squawk 1564. 1564, Southwest 1103. 1564. Okay, delete the uh, speed restrictions and the ILS runway 16 left, southwest 1103. Thank you. Alright, let's get set up here. 16 left is what we're going to do. So we're going to go in here to the arrival page. Uh, arrival, ILS runway 16 left. I want to pull it up on my ch I'll let you guys. I'll let you guys see it here too as well. <coughs> Excuse me. 
One six left. And I think they're gonna pick us up from Griffey. One one zero point three. One sixty four. One sixty four. One one zero point three. I'm going to put that in there twice. One zero point three. Cal approach Civic 2992, level 6000, crossing water intersection of Landing Seattle. Civic 2992, it's Seattle Bridge Radar Contact, Squawk 1575. 1575, Civic 2992. Yeah, I get all kinds of crazy messages. It's all good, man. All right, we're getting ready to make our turn head. He said one six left, so let's go back in here. One thing that I can't see, it's very hard to see, is this magenta color. It's not that easy to see. The runway is dry. For potatoes. All right, let's see really quick here. Winds two seven zero at five. Need to show the keyboard. Two seven zero. Diagonal zero five. No. If you don't have that in there, it won't do it. Outside air temperature, it's going to want Fahrenheit. It is 48 degrees. Ooh, it's chilly out there. And Q and H, 30. Oh, can't do it that way. Oh, come on. Can't do it that way either. Got to do it from here. 30.0. Three zero point zero one flaps configuration. We're gonna go flaps thirty. AC will be on. Anti ice is off. We'll go ahead and hide the keyboard. We'll hit calculate. One fifty four. Fifty four point five flaps thirty plus the ref five, so one fifty nine is our approach speed. And we're in the soup. Let's go. Look at the wing flex. That looks awesome. Thanks for everybody joining me uh, in my stream. Greatly appreciate it. Thanks for the follows too. Greatly appreciate the follows and the support. It's always greatly appreciated. Get down. Get through this muck. You can see the ground a little bit here coming through the clouds. We're going to do a HUD approach or a non-HUD approach. I don't know yet. I think I set up, he set up for 1-6 left. Um, 1-6 left is 11900. So we'll go back in here. 11900. see it. 
That's um, I've got to set the settings in here for Rex. The lighting's too too bright. I need to turn down the HDR a little bit, I think. It's just way too bright. See how bright the clouds are? They're a little bit too bright, I think. I think I need to bring down the HDR setting a little bit. And let's see, winds 2705, 10 miles of visibility, scattered at 34, broken at 44, temperature 09, 2.04, the altimeter 3001. So we're going to plan on a visual once we get below this gunk. We'll plan on a visual approach, runway 16 left, manually fly this bad boy in. But we're going to wait till about 8 about 800 feet to disconnect the autopilot. Right, Isabella? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. There's 6,000 feet, which I think was the lowest on the approach. 4,000. All right, let's go ahead and set speed brake. Not the speed brake. Auto brakes to two. Down to three thousand southwest eleven zero three. Okay, we're gonna take it over here. Vertical speed. We're gonna bring it down to a thousand fifteen hundred feet a minute. We're going to keep the speed at 220. Actually, let's keep it at 230 for right now. Once we get out of these clouds, we'll be able to look over and see the airport. Let's see if we can see it. It's going to be back to my right because there's downtown. No, we don't. I can't see it just yet. Boeing Field should be right here. I can see the runway. Seattle's back here to my right. There's downtown. All right, we're out of it here. Continuous, continuous. Taxi light doesn't go on until we get the gear down. We're going to go ahead and bring the speed back to 210. Got it. Pacific 2992, reduce speed to 170. 170 on the air. He should be giving us a turn here in a second. Maintain 5,000, please. Uh, think you're descending a little bit. Uh, the altimeter is 3001, correct. Uh, I think your altitude differed by a little bit. We got you now. Southwest 11, 
Right turn 070, southwest Let's see if I can see the airport. Yep, airport's in sight. Guess what that means? Autopilot. Okay, speed's gonna come back to 190 now. Flaps to five. Southwest uh, eleven zero three, two miles from car boat, you're heading one four zero. Maintain three thousand to establish the local Azure Clear Islands for night one six left bridge. One forty three thousand clear islands approaching we one six left, southwest eleven zero three. Coming to one forty. There's Boeing Field, I see the lights. There's the airport. Speed 180. Gears coming down. Speed brakes are armed. Yeah, Jeruski's. Yeah, the Seattle scenery is really cool. So you got Boeing Field, Seattle, and you got Renton. Copy the winds are only 1-6 left, clear to land, southwest 11-03, thank you. Okay, slowing speed to 1-70. And, uh, Seattle approach, uh, American 92 is ready for pushback and start. American 92, the ramp is not controlled, pushback and start will be at your own, uh, discretion. One six left is in sight. We're a little high, but I'm okay with that because we got a long taxi and we got a huge runway. So even if I kind of float down the runway, I'm totally good with that because we're at the end of the runway, the terminal. So if I can keep it like right about here is good. Pacific 8436 radar contact 17 miles northwest of the I'm gonna start slowing it down to our final approach speed 159. Gears down, speed braids armed. Go ahead and put on the taxi light. We got all the lights on. Going a, get a little low now. Correcting. Flaps 25. Now we're a little high. Correcting. Oh, the winds went away there. I don't see the winds. They're still a little high. Flaps 30. 
Throttles are mine. Gears down, three green. Clear to land, only one six left. Still a little high, like I said, we're good because I got a long taxi. Got one red, three white. Got two red, two white. Oh, we're fine with the terrain. Keep an eye on that speed here. We're a little fast. Try to stay above the runway as long as possible. 50, 30, That's good. 20, 10. Whoa, where's my pedals going? Where is my pedals going? Okay, 436, looks like you're a uh, bit right of course there. Um, yeah, I gotta fix these pedals. The, uh, radar vectors. Turn left setting 280. Gotta fix the pedals. Yeah, these pedals, like, I gotta fix it in the U, U, uh, FSU IPC. That's terrible. I'm gonna have to make the next, ta next taxiway. Southwest 1103, uh, turn left on Papa, and you can join Bravo to the ramp for range frequency. Have a good one. Okay, the ramp this frequency, Southwest 1103, thanks. Yeah, I gotta get that fixed. I don't know what the hell it was doing. It wanted to go to the right really bad. Alright, flaps are coming up, speed brake is coming down. Parker 98 to, uh, for now, taxi up to and hold short of taxi, Bravo. Taxi 2, hold short on Bravo. Yeah, I gotta get that fixed. That was uh that was terrible. But I'll take the one ninety eight, not bad. Take this gear right here. Thanks, Black Time. I appreciate you, brother. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for joining me on the stream as well. I greatly appreciate the support and everybody stopping by. You guys rock. This gear right here. It's probably not the Southwest Cape, but that's fine. Oh, which one's the nose? That one's the nose. I forget what keys it is, that one. Actually, there. Okay. Parking brake is set. Go ahead and shut down the one. Go on the overhead. We're going to go ground power because this is going to be the end of my flight for now. Ground services will go ahead and do the chocks. Jetway plug. Request ground power. See, I don't know if these jetways work or not, and it doesn't look like they do. Your choice. Enjoy Bravo to the ramp. Main frequency. How's it going? 
Let's shut down the other engine. I don't know if this gate works or not. Yeah, it doesn't it always? Let's see. It's, um, what is it, F12? Operate jetway. Let's see, I had, I had the wrong one. That's fine. Confirm, let's see if it works. Oh, it does work. I didn't think it was going to work. Let's get that door open. Cargo doors are open. Southwest likes to do the stuff from the rear. <laughs> open up the back one there. Don't use deboarding. It works. Seems like it works. Oh, look at that. As soon as I land, who comes online? Seattle Center. I guess we're going to go through the terminal here. Come back the other side. All right, guys and gals. Thank you so much for joining me on this flight. I greatly appreciate it. I need to get this rudder thing fixed here. But uh, thanks for stopping by. Again, thanks for the uh, the follows. I greatly appreciate them uh, and all the support. As always, you guys are awesome. Thanks so much again. You guys have a great rest of your Sunday. And uh, maybe do another one. We'll see how things go. You guys have a good one. Take care. B-dubs out. Peace.